This video is brought to you by Longoni Cues. Hi, Pool Players, this is the Terminator. Welcome to another episode of Terminator Tips. As you can see, I'm on the road. I'm in my hotel room at the UK Open here in London 2022. Just won my first match. And in this episode, I want to do a quick three rack review of some eight ball. I'm going to analyze three eight ball runouts for you and share you my entire thinking process along the way. So let's go back to March 2022 and dive in a little deeper. Here we go with the first rack of my first match in the European Championships 2022, eight ball. My opponent, Kanat Lar, broke dry. And right away, this is a very interesting little layout because as you can see, the stripes are actually laying pretty easy with the 10 in front of the side. So it's the 15, the 11 ball and the 13 are laying accessible and once you get perhaps on the 10 then you can shoot the 8 if the 10 was your last ball you can shoot the 8 in the lower left corner everything's very nicely connected but i don't have a starter on the stripes the 10 in the side is super thin and i'm scared that i might hit the two and some funky things might happen it's paper thin hit so i'm thinking if i take the solids here the six and seven are laying in a funky way and they look like congested but they actually both go in this lower right corner that means that my plan is here if i can take this one three four out of the equation take care of business with those and if i get from the four to around the middle of the table on the two ball i can get back or around to the other side of the eight for the six and seven i can do that if i land too short perhaps with some high inside some right spin going three rails around the six seven or if i land rather thin on the two i can use some high left and go above the eight ball so here i'm playing with low right trying to get to the middle of the table or slightly beyond as such just overran that one but the angle is still sufficient for me now to get above the eight again with that high left that i spoke about and then play some one pocket six seven I want to start with the 6 because then I only have to draw the ball to play the 7. If I get too low that's trouble because I would have to get around the table. And my final plan is to shoot the 5 in the side and the 8 here in the lower right. So this is according to plan. I want to get straight in on the 6. Now draw it back for the 7, bump off the rail. I'm checking here what I have to do with this 5 and 14 because I cannot get straight in on the 5 ball. I have to take care of business with the 14. I'm thinking with some inside, some high right spin. Even if I just graze the 14, that wouldn't be that bad because I'm going to hit the top side and the 14 would get out of the way and I'm going to be straight in on the 8. So here... Don't be afraid of just hitting the top side of the eight. Don't hit it full with some right spin there. The top side is not that big of a deal. It leaves me good shape on the eight. And a nice example of even when the balls are laying slightly congested, a one pocket option type style run out is still available. Switching a bit forward in the match. The balls are tapped, so I'm using a pop break from the rail trying to make one of those balls behind the top ball in the side pocket and here there's some congestion there with the 476 and the 1110 it's very tricky to get to the 476 because 
they're all blocking this lower right corner. Even if I land on the 6, I would have to land perfect on the 4 to do something with the 7. So my plan here is to go for the stripes and to shoot the 11 ball in the top right corner by using the 14 or the 10 to get to it. So I'm going to play 15, 12. Then I'm going to play the 13. So draw this back slightly for the 13. That gives me an angle now to bump off the long rail towards the 14 ball with some stun and right spin. And then from the 14, I can use the bottom rail and just roll it back out for the 11 in the top corner. Not easy to do, but a good option. And as you see, a closing pattern here would be ideal to go from the nine to the eight. Those balls are connected. You want to leave those alone. They want to go and connect themselves. So here I just have enough angle on this 14 to stun it to the bottom rail coming back out. And if I would get straight in on the 11, that's ideal. But once again, not easy to do. I'm rolling it with a lot of spin. No, stunning it. thought I was rolling it. As you can see, I didn't get straight in. But I still have a nice option here now to still shoot it in the top right and go to the left long reel. And that way, even if I land slightly above the 10, I can go out of that corner with some low right and go around the 7 ball for the 9 in the side just coming too close to the rail i can't do that anymore with the low right but what's still available with some top spin is go around the six bring myself into the open just roll this ball or stun it no nope, i'm drawing it in the side going to the opposite side of the eight Letting my stroke out and clearing that rack. Next game. My opponent slightly unlucky there by hitting the two ball on the point. Once again, same as the first game. You can correct that by slightly moving the cue ball on the break. A ball more to the right. So giving yourself a bit more angle. And here, once again, some congestion on this 15, 6, and 8 there. I'm opting to go for the 4. These balls are placed in groups. That's why I picked this rack. You have 4 solids on one side and 3 solids on the other. And they're all very nicely connected. So here, if I get from the 5 to the 7, then... From the 1, I can get to the 3. And from the 3 to the 2, from the 2 to the 6, and then I can go around for the 8 in the lower left. So this is a good example of that you can pick off some groups of balls. One side of the table and then to the opposite side of the table. So I want to try and get straight in here on the 3, because that would be ideal to just roll in the 2 and get on the six but I just land too short so I'm in a bit of a funky position and what's tricky about this pool players is your first instinct might be but yeah you can pocket the three and just slightly bump into the eight but then you're blocking the opening from the 2 to the 6. That's what I was thinking. My first instinct said I can just bump into the 8, but then, ooh, I'm blocking that. Then, remember the video for the soft draw and how to make the pocket play bigger. I'm going to post a link here in the top. See, I'm trying to kill that cue ball as much as I can 
that just gives me enough angle now to slightly cheat the pocket on the two. Get the cue ball about two balls to the left on the screen. And now the angle's wide open for the six. I can go two rails with a touch of high left and shooting the eight in the opposite corner. So by using that soft draw kill shot that you've been practicing now, we can get out this game. There you go, pool players. Really hope you enjoyed this quick three rack analysis of some eight ball runouts. Don't forget to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's tips and lessons are uploaded weekly. There's many playlists for all kinds of topics. And remember, if you're interested in the mental side of the game, head over to theterminatorcollege.com and check out all those courses that are waiting there for you. See you in the next episode.